So today's job is to lay this tile effect laminar flooring. Now ordinarily it's quite a simple job, any DIY can do it, you don't need a lot of tools to do it. My problem is it's not just a normal square room, I'll show you what I mean. So we've got this big expanse of floor here, but it also goes down there into the kitchen. So this is a 12 meter run, which in itself will be bad enough. But I'm also going into the dining room. I'm probably into the bathroom as well. So the first thing to do is give the floor a really good brush. Or even better, get your assistant to do it. Um, while you have a well-deserved cup of tea, get your assistant to give the floor a quick hoover just to get rid of all the last bits of dust and dirt and whatever. So you've got a nice clean base to start with. I'm entirely recommended to wear knee pads. Kneeling down all day will take its toll on your knees. So definitely get a pair of knee pads. The next job to do is to lay the underlay. Now this stuff's like a, a foam type stuff, uh, but there's all different ones. You can get you can get them on a roll. You can get the wood fibre, but I've gone for this because it's really easy to cut just with a Stanley knife. Stanley knife just slips right through it. Dead easy. So when I put the underlay down, I just use a bit of duct tape just to keep them together, just so they're not all splitting apart when you're walking on it. Just a couple of little pieces just to hold it together. Then your next one, you want to do it like a brick effect. Just so you haven't got a long joint. So where to start, if you're just in a bog standard square room with one doorway, I'd suggest starting at the doorway because you've got the architraves and if you start on a straight wall, okay that's great, it runs well, but then you've got to try and scribe the floor around the skating boards. So if you start at the architraves and work back and end on the straight cuts, that's a lot easier. So when you start at the door, Instead of trying to cut around the architrave, like I said, you can cut the architrave away, easiest things with a multi-tool. And you can slide the floor underneath it then. So what I've done here, I've just put a piece of underlay at the architrave, piece of flooring, but turned over, backside. Put that up to the architrave like so. Now you can use a standard panel saw have it flat and cut away the architrave like that but we live in a world of power tools and I like my power tools so this is a great investment it's a multi-tool this one's by DeWalt it's excellent it's the cordless version which is even great so you haven't got a wire but yeah if you're serious about DIY definitely invest in one of these
So now your flooring will slide straight under your architraves and once that's painted and cleaned up it'll look lovely rather than trying to cut round it and leaving a gap and have to fill it much neater job however because i'm doing the extension the kitchen and in here in the bathroom i am actually going to finish there i want to start over by the bifold doors and have a nice straight run by the bifold doors because that's where your eye is going to be all the time when we're sitting out there we're going to see that bit so if you have got a cut around architrave then the easiest thing to do is get yourself a bit of cardboard this is part of the box that the floor came in so it's the right sort of size you can put that under the architrave draw around it mark where your piece of flooring will finish So I'll just cut that out with a pair of scissors. So I've just got to transfer that onto a piece of flooring. And that should be a perfect scribe around the architrave. So that scribe's not too bad. Once there's a little bit of filler in there, you'll never notice that. So that's where I'm going to start. And you always start on the left hand side with flooring. So the flooring has two different sides. It's got the groove there and that sits flush to the floor. And on the other side, it's got the tongue. You might be able to view better from the end. So that bit's the tongue. And it sits in that groove. So you want to start off with the tongue up against the wall. And the groove side towards you. Because that's the way you lay them in. So that'll sit into there and then clip down. So when you buy the floor, you might want to invest in one of these fitting kits. So if you open it up, it comes with a, a block to knock them together. Um, I don't really use them. I'll show you a little tip later on for doing that. This is quite good little pry bar so that's good for the last piece you can hook it over tap that and it locks together I'll show you that later on but it comes with all these wedges so the recommendation on laminar flooring is to leave a 5 to 10 millimeter gap all around the edges just so it can expand and contract freely without binding up and lifting up in the middle so it comes with wedges and they can be folding wedges so you can have them from what they are and then you fold them over and they can get thicker and thicker to that just to take up any discrepancy in your wall so you want to start off your first row and you put the wedges in and that'll give you your five millimeter gap. So against the walls it's all right because you can put the skating board over it. Or if you've already got skating board on, still leave the gap. You can put a bead over the gap and hide it that way. Or what you can do, have a neat gap and fill it with some sealant, which is a similar color to your flooring or your skating boards. So obviously I can't get skating board in here. I don't really want to put a bead on. So what I'll do, I'll get a nice straight line and I'll put a bead of silicon right the way along. 
Right, so I've got to cut this last piece on this first row. So, tape measure, measure to the wall, minus your five or 10 mil. So I've got 430 here. So that's the way the piece should sit. So I'm measuring from that end back. Don't do what some people do and put that piece there and mark it there, you'll be cutting it the wrong way. So 430 is there. And then with your panel saw, that's square. So that's ideal for marking your piece. Just put it on the edge. Make sure it's square. Draw your line. And that's marked out. So that should fit in there. Now cutting it. Right, some people are going to disagree with me now. But I always cut them with a jigsaw. Reason being is this is a hard laminate surface. So if you cut it with a chop saw, power chop saw, it dulls the blade very quick. If you cut it with a panel saw, they go blunt dead quick. So I cut it with a jigsaw where the blades are fairly cheap. So I can use two or three and it doesn't cost a fortune rather than paying six, seven pound each for them and they're no good after the job or even more for a chop saw blade. Cordless jigsaw, brilliant, no cords to get in the way, but if you haven't got one, um, just use your corded one. Now, it is made of MDF or HDF, so it's got nasty chemicals in it. So, wear a mask, and as always, wear eye protection. And these masks by Stealth are brilliant. I'll leave a link in the description below to them. So I forgot to mention before, with the blades, a down cutting jigsaw blade is better for this because it won't chip the laminate up. So try and find yourself a down cutting blade. Now these ones are by Abrax, I think I pronounced that right, and they are brilliant. So if you look at that with the down cutting blade, there's virtually no chip out on the laminate. So I'm quite happy with that. Now, if you're wondering about this table, Works actually gave me this table and it's excellent. Ideal for something like this. That's a nice fit and the skating board will cover that gap. The first row is in. Now, you always stagger the joints with laminar flooring. Because this is a tile effect, I'm going to do a brick bond. So the halfway through is going to be where the joint is in that one. If you don't have the tile effect and you have the, the plank effect along wooden boards, so you still got to stagger the joint. So you want to stagger it by about a third. So you say that was your board, a third of it, that's where your next joint is. So your joints run basically like stairs. I've got a cut round this wall. So what I'm gonna do to get the size, I'm gonna put this row in, then I'll run the row in front so I can get accurate measurements. This flooring goes together really well. So you put the tongue in on an angle and then you just wiggle it down a little bit. Nice word, wiggle wiggle your floor down and that is a lovely joint. But to put the next piece in, because it's all clips together, you put the tongue in the groove as it was, slide it up to the next piece, wiggle it down again and then you can bang it down with your hand but if you're doing it all day it's going to hurt your hand. So get yourself a rubber mallet Three taps and it's down. That's how simple this click flooring is. So I've laid them there temporarily just so I can get my measurements. So this piece here, to mark it out, 
I'm just going to line it up with the last piece of flooring and I can put a little mark there. And then if I line it up with that piece of flooring, I can put a little mark there. So I've just got to square them along and cut them out with the jigsaw. So that's slotted in there quite nicely. Right, just put these back in temporarily. So now just straight cuts. Measure from the wall to the floor. And again, take away your five or 10 mil. So that's 230, so it'll be 225. So 230. Then you can use another piece of flooring as a straight edge. So, just gotta cut that away. So I'll just put a little scribble there so I don't get confused. I know that's the piece I want. They're the off cuts. As I mentioned before, in the fitting kit, you get a little knocking block. So if you've got a little gap, you can put it up to the edge and give it a tap. But I don't really like them, I don't use them. What I do use is an off cut from that side of the floor. So when, when you've done a few cuts, you'll end up with a piece like that, which is off that side of the board, which will fit into the tongue exactly. And that allows you to give it a tap. Now you might wreck that bit into the knocking block, but it doesn't matter because that piece of the floor will not get damaged at all. When you're doing a big full run, like that. The off cut from that end will usually start this end. It works better with plank floor and it doesn't always work with these tiles because they're only small boards. Just so you're not picking out full pieces all the time, use the off cuts from that end to start this end. So I'm on to the last run now. So it's just a case of measuring to the wall, remembering to leave the 10 mil gap, five to 10 mil gap, and then measuring and marking a length on a piece. And I've just got to cut that with the jigsaw. <laughs> So for your last piece of flooring, your last run of flooring, that's where this bar comes in handy. So sometimes it can be a bit difficult to get this closed up properly. So if you end up with a little gap, you can hook that over the end of the flooring. And then with a hammer, just give it a gentle tap. And that should close up any gaps that you've got. Right, so the floor's all finished now. I've just got to put the skating boards round, which is another job. I'll link to some of my skating board videos in the description below if you want to check them out. So if you enjoyed this video and you got some tips, then please hit the like button. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And I'll see you next time.